I've made about 30 different wicking beds out of various materials in different sizes and shapes. My favourite, of course, is wood. But wood in contact with the soil over time will rot down, and it can be an expensive thing. So I put my wicking beds on top of bricks, so the wood is not in direct contact with the soil. And the black plastic lining inside protects the timber from the soil inside the bed. So the timber will last a lot longer. I tamp down the clay, add some sand, tamp that down as well. Because my beds are 4.8 metres long, they join in the middle, so I put a metal strap in the middle to stop the two centrepieces spreading outwards. There is a small amount of cutting required for the end timbers. I have my beds at 900 millimetres wide. I use stainless steel screws to hold the timber together as they are strong and last well. As blue gum sleepers are often slightly out of shape, it can be a bit tricky to insert some of them. I recommend not putting all the screws in initially so there is some wiggle room when fitting the sleepers. I use some timbers from old beds, but this can sometimes cause problems. Three of the beds have had some issues, some minor, but some more troublesome. So I've changed the design of the corner joints using more substantial timbers. This wicking bed is 600mm high, which is the maximum you should go for a wicking bed. At the halfway point, 300mm, you need to drill a hole for the outlet pipe. I add some extra sand at the inside edges and roll it up with a tube to make it a curved surface so the plastic fits in a lot easier. Now comes the really tricky part. This food grade plastic is half a millimetre thick, so it's quite a lot of work to fit it inside your wicking bed. It would make it a little easier if you had someone else to help. But by taking it slowly, bit by bit, it will fit into the timbers. It's very tough plastic, so there's little chance of damaging it. This is the fold you're looking for at the ends, much easier with a piece of paper. It feels almost impossible at first, but with perseverance and a bit of tape, you'll get there in the end. And once you finish this end, you've got to do it all again at the other one. For the inlet pipe, I use a 90mm pipe with holes drilled every 300mm, a right angle on one end and an upright for the water to come in. At this point, I partially fill the bed to weight the plastic down and settle it along the bottom. Once the plastic is well settled, you can cut a hole in it for the outlet pipe and insert the outlet pipe through the hole. Tighten it with a spanner to make a good seal. Now fill up to the outlet level with sandy loam. I now put a reinforcing rod at the midpoint of the bed. From the outlet hole up to the top, I add a mixture of sandy loam and compost. At the very top, I use just pure compost. At this point, it's very good to have a bucket barrow to make the filling much easier. To clean up and finish off the top of the bed, I used old hardwood fence palings. I've tried various methods of keeping the outlet pipe clear, but the best one I found is this. Put a pipe down there so you can have easy access for cleaning it out if it gets blocked. Mulching the whole bed will make the wicking process even more efficient. For filling, you've got a few options. Connect it to your underground system, just pour in a bucket of water, or pop a hose in. Check the level by looking down your outlet pipe. If you do make a very large wicking bed, make sure you have enough outlets to cope with any heavy downpours that might otherwise flood the bed.